and we're live guys welcome to yet another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on take today we have a lot of news to discuss and today i really want to explain to you how these erc20 tokens were hacked namely how hackers were able to create you know trillions and trillions of these tokens how that could even be possible and also we're going to talk about the fact that Binance is more profitable than Deutsche Bank and other news as well. As always, we are broadcasting straight out of Stockholm, Sweden. It is, of course, amazing to see all of you here. If you are excited, if you want to learn, guys, if you are having a good morning, be sure to smash the likes here on YouTube and confirm in the comment section that you have done so. And if you're watching on Facebook, give me all the hearts and also confirm. I see, I see the chat rolling. And so what I really want to focus on today is the technical aspect of how these hacks happen. I mean, how people could hack these ERC-20 tokens such as Beautycoin. And also, as you probably know, in, in June, we are launching our smart contract programming course at coding.ivanontech.com. So if you want to learn programming from scratch, you do not need to be a programmer. We will teach you programming from scratch. We will teach you programming on Ethereum on EOS and on them from scratch. So definitely go to coding.ivanontech.com, check it out if you want to learn, if you really want to be part of the blockchain space by building it, not only speculating, but building it. And this is a theme I really, really want to propagate. Forget the hype and build things. We really have to build things. But let's first of all, take a look at the market. What do we have on the markets? Well, on the, <coughs> on the markets, we have greenish situation. Bitcoin plus 3.5%, Ethereum plus 4% almost, Ripple 2.8, Bitcoin Cash 2.1. So nothing really spectacular. Stellar 14%, very good. Who are the biggest winners? Sia Coin 50%. Bitcoin Diamond, 43%. Mithril, Digibyte. Congratulations to everyone holding these coins. So guys, really the main topic of today is this um, ERC-20 vulnerability that was discovered on April 22nd with uh, the connection to Beautycoin. So I don't know for uh, if you guys have followed, but this news came a few days ago and basically the hacker was able to create trillions and trillions of uh, these coins from nowhere. And so something we have to realize when we're talking about this hack and when we're talking about Ethereum uh, tokens as a whole is that Ethereum tokens are just smart contracts. They are just a program on the blockchain. It's a plain smart contract. So to really understand how you can do such a uh, hack and why this hack even could happen, we need to understand how numbers are stored in um, those programs, in smart contracts. And so I think the easiest way to talk about it is by drawing a picture. So today I'm going to be very pedagogical and we're going to draw a picture together. Basically, we have the following situation. Let's imagine that in our program, numbers can only have four digits like this. And it is the case in all... Uh, programming and in all programs. Numbers usually have a finite number of digits. In uh, programming, we call it bits, that you have a number with a certain amount of bits, and uh, those are binary bits. Now we are talking about digits, so it's not really the same, but uh, still, we can think of, of, the, of an example where our program stores numbers, and um, our program can store numbers with a certain amount of digits. So, for example, if we want to store 500, we would do 0, 5, 0, 0. So this is how our program would store the number 500. And so what we have to look at also is um, the code for the uh, tokens that were hacked. And so the vulnerable part in the tokens is called batch transfer. So all the tokens that have this function, batch transfer, are vulnerable. That And if batch transfer is implemented in this particular way. And so the interesting line is this red line here that is outlined in red. Basically, basically you have a number called value here and it is multiplied by number of receivers. So you do not need to understand what it means. If you take the course though, if you go to coding.ivanontech.com, we will teach you all of this. But basically, what you can take away from this picture here is that you have a number and it is being multiplied by another number. And this is the amount you want to transfer. 
So the amount you want to transfer is a number multiplied by, the, by another number. Number. Now, let's move back to our drawing. Let's imagine that 500 is our number we want to transfer. So this is the amount we want to transfer. 500 amount. Okay? And as you can see in the code, the, the amount, this value here, is multiplied by a number. So actually it's more pedagogical if I write value here because this is the value. And <laughs> if I multiply 500 by, for example, two, let's imagine that I multiply this by two, like this, two times 500, what do I get? I get a thousand, all right? So, our amount is now a thousand. However, however, you remember that there are four digits. So now I can store this number like this, a thousand with four digits. This works perfectly fine. However, let's imagine that the value is not 500, but it is instead 5,000. So I have 5,000 as value. And then I multiply two by 5,000 and I get 10,000, all right? Meaning that now 10,000 will not fit in my number because my number can only have four digits, meaning that I will have zero, 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 and then this one will not be in the number. Solidity will ignore this one. So basically what happened is that in the code, the Ethereum virtual, virtual machine will interpret 10,000 equals to zero because it can only have four digits and those are all zero and this one right here is ignored, meaning that I'm sending zero tokens, but in reality, I have just sent 10,000. I hope you guys understand this. This might be a bit technical explanation, but it all comes down to the fact that in Solidity, on the Ethereum platform, numbers can only have a certain number of digits, and when you overflow, when you go beyond these digits, this number of digits, as we did here with 10,000, everything becomes zero, because you only have zeros here in those digits. Meaning that the person that wants to transfer loses zero tokens. I transfer 10,000 tokens to you, but I lose zero tokens, and you get 10,000 tokens for free. So guys, that is how it works and that is how this could happen. And th this all comes down to the fact that, you know what, in this industry, it is so important to keep in mind that auditing is key. You really have to audit everything. And bugs like this are very hard to think about when you're coding. I mean, you really need to have someone external checking your code and you really have to have someone really ensuring that you have done your job in a uh, in a good way and that uh, your program is not vulnerable to things like this. But one example of how we could fix it is, for example, by having extra checks. So what, what kind of check could we have had? Well, you remember that we took two times 5,000 and this was zero because in reality it is 10,000 but 10,000 didn't fit in our little number with four digits, so it became zero. So one check you could theoretically have is that, uh, is that you check so that if you time a positive number by a positive number, the result should be bigger than the factors, than the terms separately. So this is a check, a sanity check you could have. Uh, and this would have saved these contracts. And it's not only one coin. I mean, you see that uh, this ERC20 uh, bug includes Mesh, UG token, SMT Smart, and so on and so forth. So all contracts that use this vulnerable code are, of course, vulnerable. And this is also something to keep in mind. In many cases, when people are building tokens nowadays, in many cases, when people are creating tokens, this basically, uh, this basically means that uh, you copy other token code and uh, you often do not create your code from scratch because there are so many other uh, tokens already in existence, they are all open source and it is very easy to just, you know, take another 
code from another token and create your own token by changing a few uh, parameters. And so this also means that if there is a vulnerability in this code that everyone is reusing, potentially it is very dangerous because now everything is uh, vulnerable because everyone is just reusing code from other people. And so definitely something to keep in mind and definitely something to think about when you are both investing so that you are, are aware that if you're inv investing in an ICO and you're serious about your investments, I mean, ask them if they have audited their code. How many people have looked at their code? Did they take the, their co code from someone else? And I mean, really, it is a good practice to take your code from someone else in some perspectives. I mean, if you have code that has been around for decades and you have code that, you know, thousands and thousands of researchers have looked at, it might very well be better to take that code instead of in inventing your own will. However, in our industry, it is so new, we still do not have this standard code that everyone uses. But traditionally, in programming, in software development, it is a best practice to use well-known, well-tested libraries. But uh, I wouldn't argue that it is really the case in our field right now. But guys, that was the Ethereum bug, that was how Ethereum uh, contracts were ex uh, exploited, and we will move on to the next news of the day. Did you understand any of this? Let me know in the comment section if you understood, or if you're all like, uh, al already left. <laughs> because this was quite technical. This was quite technical. Now, the second news of the day is that we have surpassed 17 million in Bitcoin. And um, now we only have 4 million left to mine. So as you probably understand, we have 21 million in Bitcoin that will ever be in existence. And um, now we have surpassed 17 million. Now, there is nothing really spectacular about this, except that it is maybe a psychological shift that now people will see Bitcoin as more uh, scarce because uh, it's only 4 million left and uh, it's not longer 16, now it's 17. And so, yeah, this article basically talks about this, uh, uh, this revolution that has happened on the internet with the creation of uh, digital scarcity, which we now have with Bitcoin. And uh, now we have reached 17 of 21 million. Moving on. This news is also very interesting <laughs> because it turns out that Binance is more profitable than Deutsche Bank. I mean, it sounds insane, but it is also true that Binance has only 200 employees and they weren't even around one year ago. I mean, when I started this channel, Binance wasn't even around and uh, now it is more profitable than Deutsche Bank. So Binance is the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange and in the first three months from inception, profits were $7 million. In the second quarter, profits were $200 million. And third quarter is still in progress and the ex it is expected to grow and grow and grow. Which is very interesting because now this is more profitable than, than Deutsche Bank because uh, something else as well is that Deutsche Bank has 100,000 <laughs> employees. Definitely something to keep in mind and also the speed of our industry is insane and this just goes to show that the speed is insane and we are moving at very fast race when it comes to taking market cap, when it comes to being global. This is something to keep in mind. I mean, the reason why Binance can move so quickly is because cryptocurrencies are truly global. Anyone in the world can be a customer at Binance. It is trading 24 seven. You do not have the situation where the stock market closes at 5 PM. Everything is open 24 seven. And there are just so many cryptocurrencies people want to trade. Of course, there is a lot of speculation as well. And Binance loves speculation because the more people trade, the more people speculate, the more fees they make. So that is, of course, something to keep in mind. It might not be the case that the blockchain industry is actually developing when it comes to actual solutions. But when it comes to speculation, when it comes to trading, when it comes to people wanting to make a profit by trading, then it is a good sign that cryptocurrencies are, of course, very popular for that. And um, it might very well be the case that Binance will become this huge, you know, central player in the crypto economy. 
and uh, just keep in mind how much money they have and how much things they can do with these funds in the future. Now, something to think about as well is that what are the central exchanges? Will we see central players moving forward? What role will, for example, Binance and Coinbase have in the future? Will they have any role at all? I think they will do everything in their power to have some kind of role. And uh, I think they are positioning themselves to be here for a very long time. But we still have to see exactly how this plays out and what kind of role they will have. Now, now that we have talked about this vulnerability in Ethereum, I thought we would talk about the knowledge section or knowledge, knowledge, uh, and in this knowledge section, we will talk about the ERC-20 standard as a whole because ERC-20 standard is such a central part of the Ethereum ecosystem and of the whole uh, uh, cryptocurrency ecosystem that we need to understand exactly what it is. So in the first part of this, uh, of this stream, we talked about the vulnerability and the vulner vulnerability was in this batch transfer function. And batch transfer is not really a, you know, a function that all ERC-20 tokens need to have. It is just a function that some of the tokens had. But uh, there is a list of functions here on Wikipedia, you can find it, that includes all of the functions that ERC-20 tokens must have. So, for example, total supply, for example, balance of transfer, transfer from, and you might be wondering, Ivan, so why do we even have ERC-20 standard? What is, what is ERC-20 standard? Well, it is basically a way to structure smart contracts that represent tokens. So that all of these smart contracts, they have different functions inside of them. And uh, the idea is that all of these tokens should be built in exactly the same way, should have exactly the same functions, so that if I'm an exchange, for example, and I support ERC-20 standard, I automatically know how to interact with each and every coin because they all work the same. They all have the same basic functions for, for example, getting the total amount of tokens tokens. As you can see here, total supply. Each and every ERC-20 token will have a function called total supply so that if I'm an exchange, I know how to get the total supply of each and every one of these tokens because the function is called the same. Or if I want to get the balance of a user by using the user's address, if I want to get the balance of a user, well, I call this function called balance of. And if I want to transfer, I call this functions, meaning that ERC-20 tokens are very, very easy to integrate in all systems. If you have an exchange that supports ERC-20, it supports all of the tokens. So I can, you know, create a token in my bedroom and, su and, su <coughs> Sorry guys. and suddenly, theoretically, I can list it on all of the exchanges if they accept me. Most probably they won't accept me. And this is also why we have, for example, uh, decentralized exchanges being able to trade the ERC-20 tokens and you can just, you know, enter the contract address for your ERC-20 token and it will start trading it uh, very, very quickly and you do not need to register because it is decentralized. And it's all thanks to the fact that all ERC-20 tokens look the same under the hood and they all need to have these functions. Now, this doesn't mean that they can't have other functions. So, for example, as you can see, batch transfer, this vulnerable function that some ERC-20 tokens have, had, it is not included in the actual uh, protocol, in the actual definition of an ERC-20 token. So once you have these functions defined, um, this means that all of the exchanges and wallets that support ERC-20 will be able to work with your coin. Now you can add even more functions and now you can integrate it even more with your system and with your decentralized application or with your business or whatever your coin really does. But basic functions are implemented in the ERC-20 standard and this means that we have this ecosystem of tokens that all function in the same manner, meaning that we can integrate them easily and wallets and exchanges can all uh, work with them in a in an efficient way so guys that was really it for this morning i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something i hope you are a bit smarter i mean if you really want to learn the technical details of everything we talked about and if you really want to become an expert yourself and program smart contracts on ethereum on EOS and on NEM. On NEM we will more uh, use it as a database, but still if you want to program on NEM as well, 
and you want to learn programming from scratch, go to coding.ivanontech.com. And if you enroll before June, if you enroll before June the 1st, you will get 50% off. So we are launching in June and you will get 50% off. So guys, that's it. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I see a question in the chat from Mad Cow. So the vulnerability was only in batch function. Yes, the vulnerability was only in batch function. However, <clears throat> many tokens use this batch function. So in that sense, it is not all ERC20 tokens, only ERC20 tokens who used that batch function. So guys, that was everything. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the likes here on YouTube. Give me all the hearts on Facebook. Have a great Friday. I hope you have had a great week and I wish you a good weekend. I'll see you all, all tomorrow for Good Morning Crypto and goodbye guys. Goodbye, goodbye. Have a great day. Enjoy your Friday.